Hey guys, I'm gonna tell you about a few of the upgrades I made to my 19.8 Nobo, No Boundaries RV that I picked up at Jeff Couch's RV Nation in Ohio in 2019. I think actually we got one of the first half a dozen, maybe fewer um, production models of the 19.8. Uh, it had been out the year before, but only as a test run. And uh, it had exact layout that I wanted with the two bunks for my kids uh, and the queen bed for me and my wife. Um, not too many complaints about this RV. It's been really good. Uh, got a good deal at uh, RV Nation there in Ohio. And um, I wanna tell you about a few things that I've done since I since I got the unit. Um, I'll uh, go through them one by one, but uh, I upgraded the batteries to two deep cycle interstate six volt golf cart batteries. Um, I also added this really nifty, I'm gonna show you this here. I also added this really nifty uh, three-way switch. Oops doing it backwards three-way switch uh, that's usually used to switch from one battery to the other but since I'm doing two six volt batteries in series actually I use this in a different way what I do is I allow myself to switch to pure solar only mode uh, or all all is just how it was normally wired with everything tied up in parallel or I can switch it completely off to prevent parasitic battery drain the idea with going to strictly solar is that there's no converter or inverter hooked up and none of the internals are hooked up just the solar charger that allows me to keep it trickle charged um, without any parasitic power drain um, i thought that was kind of handy uh, because especially when i keep the cover on it um, i need to be able to switch off the power or you know usb plugs and and carbon monoxide sensor and all that crap sits there and drains the power so um, that's a useful addition. Uh, I'll take you through the RV as well. I upgraded the bed to make it uh, be on piston jacks, the queen bed, and I uh, hated how crappy the shower floor was in these units. Uh, a lot of people have mentioned that and some people just reinforce it. Um, I had a small leak, so I just took the whole shower out and uh, replaced the floor with three quarter inch plywood. So uh, those are the major upgrades and uh, I'll walk you through them. First, I took the entire shower out because I had a small leak, but also because I wanted to replace the really poorly made floor. The way they construct these things is with a piece of quarter inch plywood that doesn't even cover the entire floor surface area, uh, supported by four two by fours set up as posts at the corners. And I just thought this was a really inadequate design. Uh, here you can see a photograph of the floor and how just incredibly cheap it is. That's why when you walk on it, you feel like you're walking on a waterbed. Well, I um, added six posts supporting a piece of three quarter inch plywood. Obviously the posts had to be a little bit shorter to accommodate the thicker wood, but that was easy enough. And uh, I also cut a proper hole in the floor for the uh, drain pipe so that you get good uh, solid support throughout. Okay, here's what it looks like after putting it all back together. Uh, it's now got the three quarter inch plywood and you can see it is solid, totally solid. Um, that circular hole that I had cut that you saw in the picture, I actually used a jigsaw to open it up a little bit to give me a little bit better access uh, to tightening up the fittings. And uh, to get it, by the way, you should know that to get it all that, you, know, you can actually just take off this front little vent cover. That vent cover is nothing but an access hole to get underneath the shower. Uh, and, um, uh, and as well, you can take off this panel with the four screws. Uh, that also gives you a little bit of access. And then I also cut another access point back here. And I had some scrap wood lying around that I made a stupid frame for. I don't really like the design, but it's actually too bulky. Um, so, uh, um, I'll probably re replace that at some point, but it's adequate for now. It's just held on with two screws. I try to use square head drive screws everywhere I can because that's what the RV is put together with. That makes it so you only keep changing bits. Um, uh, it turns out that the the drive on Craig screws is the same. So uh, that's useful to know. Um, uh, in addition to replacing the floor, I damaged the shower uh, shower screen, shower curtain system when putting it back in uh, I wasn't careful and I cracked the 
one of the rails a little bit and rather than repairing something that was never very good in the first place i bought this nautilus brand um uh retractable shower i haven't taken this little decal off yet Re uh, nautilus brand retractable shower screen which i really like because we only use our shower you know once per week long trip each probably i mean we're campers we're not we don't need to be we're not going out to the show um we're camping so we don't use a shower that much and so for most of the time i want it to be out of sight out of mind and i think that really does a nice job with that retractable shower it's a couple hundred bucks but i thought it was worth it um unfortunately the opening from here to the far wall is 37 inches and these rods can only accommodate a 36 inch or less opening you can cut them shorter but not make them longer uh, i didn't get want to get the next size up shower so I thought I could make this work, but unfortunately I had to buy a piece of one inch thick Azek to pad it out, um, which was the only pain in the butt part of the work. Um, uh, in so doing, I damaged the my first attempt at installing this thing, which is just done with a double stick adhesive. I damaged that, uh, but anyway, I didn't like the fact that it was only held on with an adhesive, so I replaced the adhesive with two Back here are two strips of double stick pressure adhesive from Gorilla. It's an interior, exterior grade waterproof material. Um, and uh, so that's never gonna come off. And um, this is now screwed with stainless steel screws all the way down. I used one and three quarter inch, maybe sorry, one and five eighths inch uh, stainless steel deck screws that I had. Probably didn't need this top one um, put a little primer on there. I'm going to paint that white to hide it a little bit. Uh, and those unfortunately are T20 drive because those are the screws I had. So it's the one screw that doesn't match everything else. Uh, but most of them are hidden and I'm never going to get to them anyway. So it doesn't matter. And then I just ran a bead of this, uh, really fancy Lexel caulk. This stuff is like super glue meets caulk. It's incredible stuff. It's expensive, but, um, I didn't want to do this twice. And, uh, I ran that uh, all the way down, all the way around. Uh, I had to fill in, I had to router out the bottom edge of my, um, Azac because this part of the shower is obviously a little bit thicker due to the fact that the shower pan is there. And I wanted to push this firmly against the wall so that it had a nice straight edge to mount my, my shower curtains, uh, uh, retractable sleeve box too. Um, so, uh, that was a bit of a pain to do on the router, but I managed to get it pretty good. Did some test pieces first. Um, and then I think you're supposed to caulk these on the outside. I caulked them on the inside, which made for a real pain right in here. So I actually had to unscrew the shower curtain support so that I could get back there and finish the caulk job and not get it all over the shower curtain. I hate working with caulk and I'm not very good at it. It's a mess. Um, but I got it done serviceably, so it should hold up. And then the other thing is that this was also only held on with double stick adhesive, but given that the shower wall is not very structural, I wanted to support it stronger. So I put two more one and five inch stainless steel deck screws in, but they basically go through a piece of quarter inch plywood, which doesn't give much structural support. So through my access panel, I fished in a piece of three quarter inch plywood as a backer that I could then screw those into. That was actually a bit of a pain because you don't have any leverage to hold the plywood. So I had to pre-drill those holes, but uh, I also counterset these, not perfectly, but they're pretty good. They're serviceable. Uh, I got a little caulk from my first attempt to fix the shower um, to clean up there. Um, and when taking out the shower, of course, I damaged some of the, some of the, um, Pulled, peeled off some of this sort of like wallpaper stuff that's on this plywood. That's unfortunate, but if I want to, I could go back and paint it, but I don't really care. Um, it doesn't look that bad. Uh, so that's it. Uh, this thing is great. I like the shower door quite a bit. Um, it's normally closed. I mean, normally open and you get a nice big open view. I got the one that was a little bit shorter than the ceiling height, which I think is important so that steam can escape while you are uh, taking a shower. That's it. Next, I modified the queen bed to be on uh, piston jacks. 
this was actually a little bit tricky because I had to completely disassemble the headboard. As you can see there on the left, it's not on there yet. Um, I had to completely disassemble the headboard. I also had to add a little bit of a footer uh, so that I would make sure I cleared the window. As you can see, I'm barely clearing the window there on the right. Um, uh, but it turns out there's plenty of room to install hinges with the uh, pin of the hinges um, extending a little bit uh, into the curvature of the front of the Nobo. That actually worked out uh, pretty nicely. Um, the piston jacks that I got are probably barely adequate uh, because I'm going to upgrade the mattress to something a lot nicer and a bit heavier. So I may need to either add additional pistons or replace them with heavier ones. And then I can repurpose these pistons to open the bunk to get access to the converter uh, a little bit more conveniently. The, you know, the uh, power center, which is under the kid's bunk. So um, I'll probably upgrade these pistons. Uh, so I don't want to give an exact design for this. This is really just a design idea for somebody out there that wants to give it a go. I was able to use all the existing quarter inch plywood, which I reinforced with strips of three quarter inch plywood from an old um, leftover plywood door that was in my garage uh, that I just didn't need. So I ripped it down into little two and a half or three inch wide strips, as you can see there. Um, that gave plenty of support when running across the rails. You can also see if you look closely that I added some various little two by fours and other uh, support structures so that, um, uh, and this was kind of a do it as, you know, figure out how to solve the problems as you're going along. I didn't come up with a grand design. I just started winging it. Um, I just took a little time to think about each step, but uh, I didn't really know what I was gonna be getting into until I did it. Um, and uh, so you can just, you know, take a careful look and study this design to give yourself some ideas, but, um, but probably you'll wanna rethink uh, how you would wanna do it based on what materials you wanna use. For example, you could replace the entire thing with a piece of half inch plywood instead of using their existing plywood. Um, there's a lot of things you could do differently here. Uh, so this just is to give you some ideas. But overall, it actually worked uh, pretty well. Um, and I do recommend it. You get access to the heater, the water heater, the water pump, the inverter, better access to the storage. Um, uh, here I'm just showing a little close up so you can see you've gotta be mindful about not hitting the uh, window, uh, which is why I had to cut it short and then uh, put a permanent part of the foot of the bed um, have a permanent part of the bed at the footer as well as at the header and then just make the liftable part a little bit narrower and that actually ended up uh, working out uh, pretty well so uh, here's how it all came together For the last bit, I upgraded to two Extreme Cycle Interstate golf cart batteries. These things are much better than 12 volt batteries in terms of energy density. Uh, I forget the exact proportion, but it's at least 30% greater energy density. And I like lead acid batteries. They're easy to manage, easy to care for. Uh, you can use a standard automotive charger. Um, and they have a number of benefits, uh, but these interstate deep cycle batteries actually also last a really long time. So I should be able to get, I don't know, five or 10 years of use out of these if I'm careful and, and take care of them. Um, you wire them up in series, as you see there. I use a really low gauge uh, wire. I basically use the same gauge as on the inverter, uh, which I think was a four gauge, uh, if I remember correctly and uh, you just tie the positive of one battery to the negative of the other and then uh, everything else just hooks up to the uh, negative and positive like normal um, of the uh, of the combined series combination of the two six volt batteries uh, and then you just make sure you set your solar charger to wet cell uh, just like you would for a regular 12 volt battery the other thing i did was i installed this cool little uh, multi-battery switch Normally it's used to switch between two 12 volt batteries uh, or hook them up in parallel. Uh, but I used it for a different purpose. I turned it around in reverse and I made it so that you can either be um, solar only or all or completely off. The third setting, which would be like everything but the solar doesn't really make sense, but 
um, um, because I'd never want to do that. Uh, But the idea with solar only is that uh, it allows you to charge the battery while not getting the parasitic drain from your power center, your LEDs, and all that kind of stuff, uh, and your your USB chargers and whatnot, um, so that you can trickle charge your battery between usage, or you can just turn the entire thing completely off. For example, if you're going to put a cover on it, uh, and then you know every once in a while you can come out and uh, uh, hook up your power center um, uh, to uh, plug into shore power in, in your garage or whatever in order to charge the batteries and you know keep it trickle charged. Um, so. I thought that was a useful addition as well. That's it. I hope you enjoyed this video and you're able to get some ideas for improving your own no boundaries RV.